Boys, it has officially been one year since I started making videos on this channel. That was so stupid. So I figured now's a better time than ever to sit you guys by the campfire and tell you a little Kangaroo classic, uh, how I got into all of this stuff. Now look, I'm really into this YouTube thing. I know I say it a lot, but it really is the only thing I care about. And uh, I really do hope that you enjoy this video. And even if you don't, you should still subscribe. My story starts like where most kids my generation story started. My dad and my parents, whenever I was about six years old, both got iPads, all right? I, I'm sure as hell that you can fucking tell where this is going already. Your boy, unfortunately, was at one point an iPad kid. There was definitely some pros and some cons about this. I wasn't the type where you would just, you know, stick an iPad in front of your kid all hours of the day, but I had one in my room and I watched YouTube more than any TV, more than anything. It was the main source of entertainment that I got. Now, because of this, I was about the first generation generation that grew up solely on YouTube videos. I didn't really watch too much TV. It was straight YouTube. And so, of course, like every other kid in America, I wanted to be a YouTuber, all right? Very original. I would literally beg my parents all the time, can I just make video? Can I just post something? Can I just make a video? They would have been terrible. I don't know what I would have made them on. I just was like seven years old with an iPad and thought I had it all figured out. And of course, they said no, right? For a lot of reasons, a lot of very good reasons. I don't think you should have a YouTube channel before the age of like 13. And that's definitely not because that's the age I started doing it. That's just kind of my rule of thumb. I kind of say that. It's kind of kind of what I say all the time, you know, don't, don't have a channel for you 13. And so I kind of let the dream die, right? I kind of figured, oh, I'm just a dumb kid with a dream, right? Oh, I'm, you know, it's stupid, right? I, I basically gaslit myself into agreeing with my parents uh, until 2019, where that Christmas I got my own computer. I built a gaming computer with my dad and it was, it was pretty decent, right? It wasn't even that bad. It was pretty fun to do, but now that I had a computer, I wasn't just confined to making dog shit on an iPad, right? To just trying to figure out how to screen record on an iPad. Now, I, now I'm in the big games. I got OBS now. I'm a real YouTuber. But like I said, though, I got that iPad Christmas of 2019. And, and if we all remember, you know, 2020, a couple things happened, right? I turned 11. You know, Fortnite was in a really good state. And then there was also like COVID and stuff like that. I decided whenever I was really bored and I had this brand new computer that I was going to start making videos. And oh my God, were they bad. I don't have any of them left in my YouTube studio right? They're all deleted on there. Unfortunately, I do wish I still had access to them, but basically, I would download any free editing software I could find, and I would play a game called Crunker, which I guarantee you none of you guys know of, and I would make Crunker montage videos, which, yes, are as bad as they sound. And Crunker, for those of you who don't know, it's basically like a Roblox Minecraft shooter game, and it was actually kind of good at one point, point. Uh, and then all the developers just stopped. It just fell off, all right? It doesn't fucking matter. I don't know why. So I made these videos, and I amassed a hefty 40 subscribers. I mean, I was a fucking big deal. I kind of realized after a couple months of, you know, impressing my fans with the quality of my videos going up and up, getting better and better, meeting the greats, all that kind of stuff, I kind of realized that I didn't like the whole making videos thing as much as I thought I did. Every time I'd edit, it would just lag to shit and it would crash and half the time there'd be a watermark. I was never getting views and I mean, that's the only reason anybody does anything on the internet is to get views, so come on, you know, well, and I wasn't even getting views, so what's the point? And so eventually, I just kind of... I gave up, all right? I stopped doing it, and I just kind of sat there and got fat the rest of my quarantine instead of doing something productive. And that all changed in 2021. This is actually the only thing that I remember from 2021. Little fun fact about Kangaroo. I don't remember a distinct memory from 2021 except for this, and I am not exaggerating whenever I say that. This is literally the only thing that I remember that came out of that year. My friend, during summer, old online friend, right? He's like 16 at the point, and I'm like 14, I'm like 12. I see that he is working on on a CSGO funny moments video. And he's not really renowned for making videos, right? He's just kind of doing it for fun, whatever. Very original concept, by the way. Nobody's ever done that before and gotten 5 million subs doing it. And I kind of think it's cool. I'm like looking at it and I'm previewing it and he's like editing it really heavily. And he's like trying, he's adding zooms and he's adding subtitles and all this shit. And it's like his first crack at making videos and you're just watching tutorials. And I was like, this is, this is cool. Like, how's he doing this? And so I download, I illegally download download, I crack, I pirate, I steal Premiere Pro off the internet, and I learn how to make videos again. And I already had some experience with editing softwares, like, like I said, like I actually learned how to use like some fucking really ghetto and shitty watermark editing softwares, and so I wasn't absolutely clueless, but equating free editing softwares to Premiere Pro is like equating a McDonald's cheeseburger to Gordon Ramsay. And it took me a while to figure out and get my grips with editing, but I realized that I just liked making videos. I just liked 
liked editing shit. I didn't really care about what I was editing or whatever it was. I would literally go on YouTube, I'd look up copyright free footage, and I would just edit it and put random effects on it and stuff. None of it made sense. It wasn't for any cohesive video or anything. I just thought putting effects on shit looked cool and it was fun to do. And after a while, you know, about a year of on and off editing, I kind of got decent at it, or at least I thought at the time. Looking back, I was fucking terrible, and I'm sure I'll say that in the next two years. But anyways, after editing for a while, I realized that, hey, I could make money off of this. And so the real story began. We are now in summer of 2023, early summer 2023, where I realized that I'm going to be a millionaire, all right? And I'm going to do it by editing for people. And so I go into Discord servers and I go into Reddit servers or fucking whatever they're called. I just start advertising myself, basically. I have no prior work experience, nothing. And I'm just looking for people that need editors. I'm looking at editor communities and all that kind of stuff. And I get two people that say that they need an editor. And they're just at, they're just random channels, right? Like, some random, like, small gaming channel and another, like, Sunny V2 style channel. And I'm like, you know what? I just want the money. I just, I think this would be cool. And so I start editing for these people. And I'm like, wow, I love editing so much. This is so great. I love spending seven hours on a video and get paid 60 bucks. It's awesome. Then whenever school started, I went, this whole editing thing is kind of stupid, right? I do all the work. I get barely any money and no fame for it. Why would I ever do this? So I stopped doing it. And instead, very, very late summer, I started making commentary videos. And there's a little bit of a story behind this. There's a little bit of an origin. Basically, there was this old commentary YouTuber I used to watch named Scrub <laughs> named Scrubby. I've talked about him in a lot of my videos. You might have seen that one dog shit one, that one absolutely sick fuck video that I made that's so apt. He was basically like an inspiration. I wanted to make videos like him because he quit, and so I started making, like, gameplay commentary, Leafy is here, fucking scrubby style videos. The one thing that I will mention about this era in the Kangro cinematic universe is that, oh my god, did these do ridiculously well. I started making these videos with, like, the 40 to 50 subs that I amassed from the Crunker shit, and, like, two weeks after, I had, like, 400 subscribers. I don't know what happened, but these videos just blew up, and they didn't really blow up. Like, they, they just started and they got like a thousand views or like 800 views, 700 views, way more than my crunker shit was ever getting. And I thought it was awesome. I thought my videos were so good. I thought they were the best. And I thought people loved them because they were getting such good views. And all the comments were like, wow, you're so young and you make such good videos. You're only 13 and you're better than my ex-wife. And it was, it just, it got to my head. All right. I'm not going to lie. It was really cool to be able to wake up in the morning and read just the coolest fucking comments ever. But after about six months of doing these commentary videos and them slowly slowly trickling down in views and me slowly getting less interested in it, I went, yo, this commentary thing fucking sucks. And I did that for three reasons. One of them was because I really want to be able to meet my idols. That's one of my biggest goals with doing YouTube, right? And my idols, like Tommy and it, Jay Schlatt, Ludwig, that kind of like streamer audience type shit, they are not associated with anything gameplay commentary. So even if the best comes to best, I'm not gonna be able to meet the people I wanna meet, which is one of my biggest goals with YouTube. On top of that, I don't enjoy making these videos. I'm just making these videos because I think they'll get views, and then they don't get views, so why am I doing it? I don't even care what I'm talking about. I'm putting less and less effort in, and I just don't, they're just not fun to make for me. The third reason that I stopped doing them was because I forgot the third reason, and that, overall, was why I stopped doing these dog shit commentary videos that I still leave up on my channel, so that way people can see where I came from and where I started from. After the commentary phase, I start to be more of myself, right? I start to make videos that I want to make, that I think are cool, that are on topics that I think are cool, that are playing games I think are cool. This is kind of the point where I get, a, like, obsessive. This is the point where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be a YouTuber. No matter what, I'm gonna either be a YouTuber or I'll kill myself if I don't. Don't take that advice, all right? That's for the extreme. I would not recommend you take that. I make these videos, right? You can see them on my channel. It's kind of like a phase where I make like green screen videos and then I made like Mario videos and Zelda videos and shit. And I continue to do this. And at this point, I don't work for anybody, all right? I'm done being an editor. I'm done working for other people. I got a couple other jobs in this time that were paying me actual money, but I was, it just sucked. And I would sleep like four hours a night and I would be tired all the time. And I still wasn't getting any recognition for the work I did. And so I stopped editing and I just started making videos myself the whole time. And that was the best decision I ever made because just a couple weeks after quitting my editing job that paid me like $1,000 a month at like 14, which is pretty good, I had an idea. I want another job, but specifically, I want a job for Joe Bartolozzi. I said, I want to be an editor for Joe Bartolozzi. And I said, no matter what, I'm going to be an editor for Joe Bartolozzi. I don't care what happens. I don't care. I'm going to be an editor for Joe Bartolozzi. And so I go into his Discord server and I ping their mods and I'm like, yo, mods, 
notice me, all right? I'm trying to advertise myself here. I figure I should Trojan horse myself to jail. I should get to him through his mod so I can guarantee he'll see my request. Like a, like, a, like the annoying 14-year-old I am. And then something better than the mods recognizing me happens, all right? I'm posting in the Discord server, and one of his editors, cloak me please. If you watch Joe Bartolozzi, you know who this motherfucker is. He sees that I'm trying to be one of the editors, and he's one of the editors. And he adds me, and then we start talking in DMs. And he shows Joe personally my shit. Basically puts in a good word for me. Out of nowhere. I don't even know this guy. And Joe doesn't want an editor. And I'm sad, but at least I knew that he saw my shit. So I wasn't that mad. And I made a friend on, along the way. I made a friend with Cloak Me Please. One of my best, one of my, one of, the, one of the coolest guys I've ever met. And a couple months later, I'm continuing to do the videos I'm doing. And I get a message from Cloak. And he goes, yo, bro, are you still looking for that Joe Bartolozzi job? And I think I literally, if my memory serves me right, I think I did a backflip in that moment of excitement. That's how excited I was. Cloak, unbeknownst to me, was also a thumbnail guy for Joe Bartolozzi. He would edit some of his videos, and he did thumbnails for him. And Cloak didn't really want to do the thumbnails anymore. He was tired of doing them on top of the editing. He was quitting. And so Joe asked him, he was like, yo, Cloak, do you have any other people that you think you could recommend for the spot? He goes, Kangro. Just says my name. No fucking Heisenberg. He says my name. I send, I'm not even a thumbnail guy either, and I, I send Joe some of the fucking thing. Joe adds me. I, I piss my pants. Joe Bartolozzi, the biggest TikToker of my generation, adds me. I send him some of my shit that I've worked on. I get the freaking job, and I'm not even a thumbnail editor. I kind of stopped making videos. What happened, bro? Over the summer, I kind of went through an upload fast because I wasn't really feeling any of the ideas that I was doing. I didn't really have much motivation or discipline, and I was kind of losing the spark that I had just a couple months ago whenever I was uploading these fucking Breath of the Wild videos, all this shit that was going crazy and shit like that. And then I went, you know what? If I want to be a YouTuber and I want to meet my idols, which is aforementioned one of my biggest goals with YouTube, I should probably upload some videos. And so I started uploading videos, and that brings us to today. That is basically the complete story. The cool Kangro story. That's what I'll call it. Now is the part of the video where I guess I should project where I'm gonna be so that way in two or three years people can clip this and be like, wow, he used to be from the mud. Just like Jinxie, alright? If I were to guess where I'd hope to be in a couple years, because I may as well, it's topical, I hope that by the end of 2025, I have 100,000 subscribers and 300 average viewers on every Twitch stream I do. I hope that I will have an editor by this point and that I will probably be uploading every other day or at absolute most, no matter what drop dead no more than four days without an upload but primarily every other day that's where i want to be that's what i'm going to hold myself to that's what i'm going to do because remember what happened the last time i said i was going to do something whenever i said i'm going to work for joe bartolozzi and it didn't work originally it was kind of a, a couple months where i i just kind of didn't really get what i wanted but then eventually i did i think you see where i'm going with this i think you see what's going to happen here anything hard anything worth chasing in life is going to be difficult to do but that's what separates the people that do it from the people who don't i did not stutter during that quote.